Hey, this is David, and this is going to be a brief overview of the engineering section of White Box Learning. Specifically, we're going to focus on Gliders 2.0, and this should help you get started building your plane. First, I'm going to click on Engineering, and then I'm going to go to File, New, so I can open up a new plane. I'll hit Start a New Concept, and then you'll notice there's nothing on my screen. Over here are a couple of different eyeballs. These little eyeball icons will help you reveal what is in your workspace. So right here I hit this for the design model and it shows me the whole model. If I turn this off I can actually go one part at a time. But it is just a little easier to hit the whole thing and then I can see my entire design. Over here you'll see a couple of functions. One is this rotate. So if I want to look at different angles of the plane I can use my left mouse button and move the plane around. I want to turn this off when I'm actually working on the plane because otherwise the, the size of the different parts of the plane will change and it'll be spinning around. I'll show you that in a little bit. If I want to zoom in, I can click here. And when I click my left mouse button, it zooms in. And when I click the right mouse button, it zooms out. If I want to reset it, so I go back to the original image, there I go. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. The first thing that I do is click on optimization because this is going to show me uh, how optimized each part of the plane is. And as I make changes, these triangles will move either to the left, which means it's going to perform poorly, or to the right, which means it's going to perform better. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is work on my wing here in a second. Now, we've kind of developed a plan a little pattern for working on our plane and let me show you what we're doing to try and get our plane so that it'll fly. When I come here, we start with the wing. Of course, the wing is the most important part of the plane. Uh, we start with lift and roll and we start with lift efficiency and the effective angle. So what we're trying to do is get these two things optimized before anything else. Then we move on to pitch and specifically the horizontal stabilizer to wing area ratio, HS to WAR. And that is just changing the shape, really, of the horizontal stabilizer in this case. Then we move on to yaw, uh, which is changing the vertical stabilizer. So there is also a ratio of this vertical stabilizer to the horizontal stabilizer. And then when we need to, we start moving on to the center of gravity and also the neutral point. The thing to remember is that the center of gravity always follows the mass. So again, I'm going to first start with lift. The lift efficiency ratio is the ratio between the wing planar area and the weight of the glider. We're going to focus on the wing planar area. Now if I make the wing bigger, I'm going to get more area and that's going to give me a better lift so I should see this triangle move. First thing that we do is we're doing a tip dihedral plane and we're going to make that change before we get started. So I'm changing this to a tip dihedral right here under the dihedral type and then I hit apply. That's when it will apply to the model that I'm working on. Now you can see where my lift is right now. If I want to see that the exact number I can click on this wrench and it'll show me my lift. And here's the wing planar area, here's the glider mass, and my lift efficiency right now is at 14.83. Uh, just to get our plane flying well at all, we start with the lift efficiency ratio that's going to be greater than 18, an effective angle that's 15 degrees. We can actually get between 12 and 15 and the plane will fly. Uh, the horizontal stabilizer to wing area ratio needs to be between 0.125 and 0.17. CG cord fraction is 0.33 to 0.05 and the static margin needs to be less than 25.4 and I'm going to just start by making this wing big okay so I grab this dot and I drag it and that's going to allow me to change the shape of the wing see that change look my center of gravity is changing a couple things are changing but I'm really just focused on the lift right now I'll drag this up a little bit see my plane zooming in when I click that's because I have this on so I'm turning that back off Make this a little bit bigger. I should see my lift go up a little bit more. And you see over here it's at 17.9. I'm getting closer. 
drag this down a little bit and see if I can get over there. I'm over 18. Uh, one thing when you're working on the wing though is it's pretty easy to get out of spec. So let me show you how to check your specification. I'm going to go to outputs, design specifications, and you can see my wingspan is out of spec. I'm a few millimeters too wide in this case. Um, I go back here, the way I can fix that is just making this a little narrower. Now, if I drag this all the way to the bottom, this is the wing cord, which is the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing. Uh, if I make this too long, then my cord will be out of spec. Let's check this one more time to make sure that I made the right correction. And you can see that now my wingspan okay, is under the maximum of 300 millimeters and my true wing length is under 300 millimeters. Okay, so I'm above, well, I'm not above 18 anymore, so let's go ahead and drag this down. So I did make that wing a little bit smaller. I'm at 18.14. And from back, double check. I'm still within spec. Come back to engineering. Now, on my list, the next thing that I'm looking for is to get my effective angle up to 15 degrees. That's going to control my roll, my effective angle. So let's come back to my model. And right now, I'm done looking at lift, so I can click done. That'll remove that. I'm still working on my wing, so I keep that up. And then I'm going to go over here to roll. My roll right now is at 5.75 degrees. The effective angle as you can see in this diagram, is going to be the average angle between the tip, the angle of the tip, and the angle of the rest of the wing. In this case, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be whatever angle that we choose. It does depend on the area of the wing as well. And as you can see here, the area of this section of the wing is bigger than the area of this section of the wing. So that means that this zero degrees counts a little bit more than whatever angle that this tip of the wing is. So this gives me two options. I can either make the tip bigger, so if I bring this in a little bit, that makes the tip bigger, and you'll see this pops up to 6.46 degrees. That is going to change it a little bit at a time. If I drag this up, it'll change it a little bit more. But really, I'm going to get the most change when I change the tip dihedral angle. Right now I'm at 15, so I'm going to try 25 degrees. I will hit apply and let's see what happens to my roll. Do you see this triangle moving up? Also I'm at 11.62. So what we want to try to do is at least get over 12 before we fly it the first time. So 25 wasn't enough. I'm going to try 28. Hit apply. Let's see where I'm at. All right, I'm at 13.19 degrees. I'm doing pretty well. I want to look at the next step, which is my pitch, and that is to change the horizontal stabilizer. So since I'm done with roll, I'm going to click done. I'm not going to deal with the wing anymore. I'm going to the horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to click the wrench there. You can see that changes, and I can now change the shape of my horizontal stabilizer. If I look at pitch by clicking on the wrench, I can see that my stabilizer to wing area ratio right now is at 0.2. And that needs to be between 0.125 and 0.17. At 0.2, that means it's too big. So I need to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to bring this in a little, see what happens to this triangle. It's moving over. Right now, I'm at 0.17, which is right on the top end of that. I'll go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. See if I can get that all the way over to the right a little bit more. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now my yaw is off, and my yaw is my left to right direction, and that is stabilized by the vertical stabilizer. So as you can see here, I'm going to focus on yaw, and I'm going to do that by changing the shape of my vertical stabilizer. So let's click on vertical stabilizer. You see that now? And um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I make this bigger, what happens? Okay, I can see that it's moving to the right. Well, let's try making it even just a little bit bigger and see what happens. Move to the right just a tad. So I can keep moving this to dial it in. Okay. Now, 
One other thing that is going to help the stability in the yaw direction is going to be where this vertical stabilizer is in relation to the wing. And right now, the fuselage is straight across, and this vertical stabilizer is basically on the same plane as the wing. Uh, so there's another tip that I give my students that does a couple of different things. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the fuselage real quick. And I have the option here to taper the nose, taper the body, and taper the boom. So tapering the nose, if I check that, you're going to see it makes this angle uh, come down towards the front. But that also took a little bit of weight off the front. And if uh, you didn't see that, it actually took my center of gravity off a little bit. When I uncheck this, you'll see my center of gravity just a little bit better. On the other hand, uh, if I taper the body, I'm going to take some weight off the back. And so my center of gravity is going to move forward, closer to where it needs to be. Uh, so that takes a little bit of weight off the plane. That helps my lift efficiency. And you notice that my yaw jumped up as well. I'm going to click Done with the fuselage. I'm going to go back here and see if when I change this shape again, a lot of this is just experimentation. You're just going to make some changes, see what it does. Okay, now not everything is perfect, but this is a good time to get a flight with my plane because I can see my stabilizer to wing area ratio is at 0.16. I wanted that to be in this range, and it is. Uh, if I look at my effective angle, my effective angle is part of roll. And right now that is at 13.19 degrees. So I'm over 12. Uh, that's where I'm going to start. And then my CG chord fraction right here is at 0.55. Could be a little bit better. My static margin is at 10. That's under 25.4. My lift efficiency ratio, check that again, and that is at 19.48. Remember, we took a little bit of mass off of there, changed the weight, made it a little bit lighter, so my lift efficiency went up even without changing the wing. Let's go ahead and fly it. Here is how you fly your plane. Here's also how you save it. I can go to File, Save. I'll make a name for this plane. Okay, this plane is going to be Test Flight. Eight. Name it whatever you want. You can put some notes in here about the changes that you made. And I can do one of two things. I can save a working copy, so that just saves it for me to check out later. Or I can save and enter the competition. I save and enter the competition. And then I come over here to, before we go to the competition, let's double check here and make sure that I'm not out of spec. Well, look at that. I am a little out of spec right now. So I'm going to go back. My wing true length, it's too long. I'm going to go to my wing before I fly it, narrow it down just a little bit, back to outputs, design specification, and just a hair over, back to engineering, shave, oops, shave a hair off of there again. I'm going to drag it down a little too because it's making my tip smaller. My lift efficiency is still at 19, that's good. Outputs, design specs, I am in all black numbers, so that's good. All right, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to save this again because I just made changes, so save, save it into the competition. I can click on competition, and you'll see my plane is here, test flight 8. Uh, also, Colton flight is in here, so we're going to race against him. I'm going to use my left mouse button, and I'm going to choose contender 1 for myself. If I want to just race myself, I can also make myself contender two, and you'll see I can start the race. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put CBJ the bomb, and he's going to be uh, test number two. He's going to be flight two. So I hit start. Colton planes on the right. Oh, look at his. He looks oh, dropped out of the sky. I was just still flying a little bit longer. So you'll see that right now my flight time was 3.77 seconds. Uh, you know, I think that's a decent time to start. Uh, some of my students are getting over 7 seconds and uh, even up to 8 seconds of flight time. 
Uh, but I got a lot of room to go. My lift efficiency, I've seen numbers as high as 27, 28. So there's a lot that you can do there. Our effective angle again is at 13. Uh, I can get that up to 15. And I can get my uh, CG chord fraction. I can get my center of gravity to move up a little bit. And what I would work on next personally is I would go to my effective angle because that's pretty simple. Reset my simulation. Go back to engineering. I'm going to be working on the wing. I don't need to look at lift efficiency right now. Wouldn't need to look at pitch right now. But this 13 degrees, I would start changing this a little bit until I got this right at 15. And then I'd fly it again. So you keep making changes, see how your what your optimization looks like, and then go and fly your plane and see what it does. And then check the results, figure out a plan of what you're going to do next, make another change. It takes a lot of trial and error to get your plane flying the way that you want it to. This is one of the tricky things. It's not very hard to build the plane. I think it's a little bit harder to actually design the plane. So take your time. Fly it a lot to see how it's doing. Make lots of changes, small changes. Fly them and keep doing that over and over again until you get the plane that you want. Okay, we've flown our plane once. Let's make a change to it. I'm going to change this to 30 degrees. Apply. This jumps up to 14 degrees. File. Save. Save and enter the competition. Come over here to the competition. And then this time I'm going to fly against myself. And now I'm at 4.2 seconds. So that's good. But I forgot to check whether or not I was in spec. Since I changed that angle, my wing true length went up. And so I would have to shave that down just a little bit. But I do want to show you one more thing. Here in the journal, you can go to your engineering logs and you can get, we're looking at test flight 8, you will see every single plane design that you have saved and flown. If I come here, my first one, I made lots of changes to get started and uh, I was out of spec. I flew it the second time, a couple little changes, brought me in spec, flight time of 3.77 and now 3, made that one change, my flight time is 4.2. I'm out of spec. Again, outputs, design specifications shows me that I'm a little bit too long for my wing. I would change that. Go back here to my journal, engineering logs. What's great about this is if you have a great plane that's flying awesome, you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to lose it. You can make changes, you can make mistakes, it can get worse, but you can always go back to the best version of your plane. Once you have the best version that you want to build, then let me show you how to look at the plans. You can go to outputs and legal or letter size. We print ours out on legal size. If I click that, this is the design of my plane. Here's my fuselage. This is the hook onto the rubber band. Uh, this is for me to grip so I can pull back on the little slingshot launcher that we have for the plane. Our horizontal and vertical stabilizers our wing and you can see this is where I'm going to cut it for my tip dihedral angles and you can see right here this is the angle so this is the angle that I cho chose the wing shape uh, dimensions that I chose everything that I designed is this plan right here I would print it out and then I can start building it so good luck building your glider 2.0